Hi everyone, Scott with Cyberscribe.org and in this video I'm going to be creating a non-root user credential and I'm going to be using that to manage my hosts in Ansible Tower. So a quick recap of where we're at. I have two hosts. I have GitHub integration for those hosts for playbooks and for the inventory. And how I have those set up is, you'll see, I have them to update revision on launch. So if I make a change, and I'm going to have to here in GitHub, it's going to, before it runs the playbook, it's going to contact GitHub and update that playbook. So if I make a change, it should be reflected because I'm updating on launch. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a credential and then we're going to basically update the job template that we have. But the first thing that we need to do is create an Ansible user on my two hosts. So what we have is I have a shell script and I'll put this in the notes as well. But it's basically going to be reading in Ansible hosts.txt and the Ansible node password. And we're going to be creating an Ansible user. So let me just cat out Ansible hosts. And you can see it's just servo1, servo2. And then I'll just cat out add user. And basically this is, uh, like I said, I'll put it in, in the notes. Uh, but what we're doing is just we're going to use SSH to log in as user root to the hosts as we loop through uh, the text file there. And we're just going to run some commands. So the commands that we're running are here is to add a user called Ansible, set the password for that right here, and then the password is generated from uh, reading the text of the password file that I've created and then running that through OpenSSL to create a hashed password there. And then after that we're going to add this Ansible user to the wheel group and that will give that user sudo permissions and with sudo you can restrict what commands are running and you have some control over that so it's much better to use that than running as root and with uh, you know with ansible and ansible tower there's numerous other ways to connect to your managed nodes so just be aware this is one of them and we'll see that as i go when i create the credential but right now let's just go ahead and we'll just run this script And hopefully that takes my password. Okay. So again, this isn't completely non-interactive. You do have to put in the passwords. And you can do like, uh, you know, public key authentication and, and things like that. So you don't have to do any passwords. But uh, regardless, we should be able to SSH as the Ansible user into that with the password that I put in and we do. So I'm just going to assume that O2 worked and we are done. Uh, now we have an Ansible user on our Servo 1 and Servo 2. So, you know, interactive, uh, how much, how many nodes you have to update is maybe the judgment or the gauge of whether you make this completely non-interactive or if there is a little bit of interactivity like I had to put in passwords. So just, you know, use your judgment for that. But now we have an Ansible user on these hosts. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here, we're going to create a new credential, and I'm just going to say Ansible user. And organization is just the default here and select the credential type. So there's a lot of these different types of credentials. So if you have like CyberArk or other kind of password vaults, you can use that. Uh, you see AWS, there's uh, a good amount of other, uh, other ways to kind of connect in a more secure way than what I'm doing here. So just be aware that there is quite a bit of, quite a bit of, uh, options. And Ansible Vault is another option, and I, I'll probably make a video on that in the future. But right now we're going to be using machine. 
and this is basically just exactly what it sounds like. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the username is Ansible and the password is right there. If you really want, you can prompt on launch, but depending on what you're doing, that might defeat the purpose. Uh, now, private, oh, so we don't need that. Privilege escalation method. This is another interesting thing. So, for example, if you use Power Broker or something like that, or other ways of escalating privileges, you can add those in here. But here I'm just going to use sudo. I'm going to leave this escalation username blank, and for the password, I'm putting in the same password as right here. So I'm going to save that. All right. So our credential is good. Next thing we need to do is we need to kind of instruct our playbook to escalate the privileges because we're going to be connecting with the user Ansible who for an update is not going to normally be able to do that. So here, I already did this and I, I'll just show you right here, become colon yes. So if you look here, this is just the Ansible documentation and become is their privilege escalation um, nomenclature, I guess. And uh, just because you become somebody else as you use, for example, sudo or one of these other ones. So what you do, and this is a good, uh, good documentation, uh, it shows that you can, you know, become for a task or you can become for your whole playbook. So it's pretty good documentation. Generally speaking, Ansible does have good documentation. So here I have just under, I have it above my tasks because I'm going to need to reboot and upgrade. I'll need uh, sudo for both of those. So I just have that right here. So that's the change in the playbook. And what we'll do now is we will go to our template and we will adjust it. So we'll put in the credential that we just created, Ansible user, and right there. And then nothing else should change. We'll save it, we'll launch it, we'll see if it is going to work. So we'll give it a minute. I'm just going to pause this and we'll come back and we'll get the result. And we're back, and uh, we have a successful run of the playbook here. You can see become right here, so you see that it is using that. And uh, updating and rebooting, nothing to do here. Whoops, let's close that. And But it did reboot also, so it, it worked as expected. And we did this as the Ansible user using pseudo privileges. So quick recap on this one is... Number one, if you're going to do this, make sure you have a user on your managed nodes that you can connect to with SSH. So I'll put these uh, things in the notes just to give you a little quick guide how to do that. And one way of doing it, there's always many ways. And then what you do is you create a credential like we did with this Ansible user and you're setting the username to whatever that username is. It's going to be machine for credential type. Privilege escalation method is sudo. And then you put in the privilege escalation password as well. Then you add this become to where it is appropriate in your playbooks. After that, you adjust your template to show this new credential here. Then you run it and you're good to go. So that's all I had for this video to show you how to create a credential for a non-root user and use that to manage your nodes via some type of privilege escalation like sudo. And uh, that's all I had for this video. So stay tuned for future videos.